Yes, students uh, wait for some time. I think uh, Pooja now have some uh, internet issue. Uh, she will join us really soon in like one or two. Okay, just wait for some time. I think she joined. She joined us. Pooja ma'am, we are audible to you. Pooja ma'am? Yes. Shall I continue or sir, is sir speaking? Yeah, yeah, you can continue ma'am. Yeah, so how many of you got how many right? Correct, one got okay, very good with you also. Get ready for another picture, okay? Okay, note down the elements. Yes, I
Check how many you got correct. Seventeen. Okay, very good. Okay. Others? Twenty-four. Very good, Ritik. Okay. I've collected a few questions from your uh, paper. Okay. I wanted to see how many of you got correct, got this correct. What is the percentage increase in the area of a rectangle if each of its sides is increased by 20%? How many of you had done this, if you remember, of course? Yes, ma'am, I did it. I did it, okay. Solve it in uh, other, uh, everybody, okay? Try to solve this if you have done good. You can solve it easily if you haven't tried, please. Forty four, right? 44, okay. Yeah, 44 is cut. Okay, see here. Area of rectangle formula is length into breadth, right? okay? So each of its sides is increased by 20%. That means L and B is increased by 20% equal. So increase in L and B shows L plus 20% of L, meaning they're saying it has increased from L to 20% more, not just 20%. So L plus 20% of L and B plus 20% of L. So the increased L would be 1.2 L and increased breadth would be 1.2 B. Now, if you guys don't know how that came about, this would be L plus Percentage when you want to convert into fractions, it would be you would divide it by 100. Okay, so it will be 20 by 100 into L. This will be L plus 0.2 L, which is 1.2 L. Okay, similarly, say the same with red. Now, the new A area would be 1.2 L into 1.2 B. So this would be 1.44 L into B, correct? This would be L into B plus 0.44 L. We want to find the increase in the A, okay? So LB is normal area that would have been and 0.44 LB would be the increased, okay? But they have asked in percentage, okay? Now, when you want to convert percentage to fractions, you divide by 100. When you want to convert fractions into percentage, you multiply by 100. Okay. So the increase in the area is 0.44 LB and multiply it by 100 into 100 will give you 44. So the increase is 44 percent. Okay. Any doubt in this? A man's swimming speed with the current is 15 km per hour. The man's uh, the speed of the current is 2.5 km per hour. What's the man's speed against the current? You guys, do you how to solve this? I don't know. Uh, tell me whether you they have taught you speed, time, and distance in school, uh, sports and streams type of questions. Yeah. Or, yeah, they have. Okay. Okay. 
so whenever the boats and streams upstream and downstream speed comes into a picture the two important factors which decide that speed is one is speed of the man here okay the man in still water meaning without the influence of the water okay take it as this okay. here they have given the man okay he is swimming so that's why i have taken it as speed of the man in still water if they ask for about boat okay then i would say speed of the boat in still water depends on the question next speed uh, next important factor would be speed of the water current okay here it is 2.5 km okay now when you go downstream meaning you are going with the current meaning the water is helping you to move forward so downstream speed is equal to x plus y is equal to x y okay this will be x plus y and upstream speed would be x minus y okay now downstream speed they have given 15 km and y is also given okay so we find x x plus 2.5 is equal to uh, 15 okay ma'am uh, yeah so if it's uh, with the current then it's downstream right yes okay x is 12.5 km per hour okay now we know x and now we know y also they have asked the man speed against the current that means upstream speed so it would be, it would be x minus y which is 12.5 minus 2.5 10 km per hour is the man's upstream Any doubt in this? I've given it in short now. Okay, if you want, we'll make a whole chapter of it, a whole class of it, where it will into include average speed, all of it. Okay. Also, some of the questions which I've not included, I'm planning to again make a whole lesson of it. For example, clocks and calendar. It's very important. The question they had asked. Uh, Okay, how many times do both the hands of a clock coincide in a day? Considering the day is twenty-four hours, right? This, these all questions are standard, uh, like important notes kind of thing. Okay, so these are all we'll do. It's, it's, along with that, we'll also do questions like, uh, if today is Tuesday, what will it be on third May? Something like that. That we'll do a whole lesson. That's why I skipped it for now. A farmer travelled a distance of sixty-one kilometers in nine hours. He travelled partly on foot at four kilometer per hour and partly on bicycle at nine kilometer per hour. What is the the distance travelled on foot? Have you guys uh, did you guys do this in the exam? Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. You got the answer correct. If you checked it. Yes, ma'am. Very good. uh now we'll do this later because for this to make sense i'll have to give you a background which will take about half an hour okay so leaving that we'll go with the other part now what we'll be doing today will be uh, is that uh, we'll be studying types of houses okay i am assuming they give you a question right traditional house in indonesia that was answered we'll do the uh, various types of house they are not all of them okay but we'll start with this okay Okay, see round houses. Okay, uh, where is it from? Land of deserts in the north and green landscapes in south. Burkina Faso is a landlocked country in West Africa. Okay, it's a country in West Africa, and uh, they live in countryside. Almost all of them live in countryside, and that it is a rural area kind. Of thing, okay, their huts. These are these can be termed as huts, but they are traditional homes made of uh, mud. Okay, the inside of it is covered in mud. This Especially the roof, okay, to keep it stable. 
in rural uh, burkina faso nomadic cattle keepers often live in huts made of woven reeds okay, the design that you can see here the pattern okay it's uh, woven actually handmade okay we'll see actually we'll actually see these type of designs elsewhere also depending on where it is and what kind of plants they have okay, this type of design is uh, very much common Malay homes in Indonesia. Now, Indonesia has a lot of traditional houses. Okay, this is one of them. Uh, see, Indonesia has more than eighteen thousand islands, in which only six thousand have people living on them. Okay, six thousand islands have people living on them. Okay, traditional uh, homes are often built on stilts. prevent them from getting wet as many people live near the water edge okay in papua indonesia some families still live in the traditional homes called honai made from wooden slats and thatched roofs okay traditionally fires are built in the stand center of the round house now the first part which i showed you these houses okay they are made from thatched roofs okay Uh, this is a part of uh, so one part of traditional homes not all of it these are some of the other traditional houses okay the names are little confusing okay see this is this part okay but the common part that you see everywhere almost everywhere is that they are built on built on stilts stilts means wooden uh, bamboo this ones i can say okay the uh, bottom floor the ground floor is usually kept bare because it's an island okay there may be a time when it comes to water flooding okay they want to protect themselves from that from that okay now what you saw was this in your question paper but there are also different kinds of uh, traditional houses this is the very simplistic form no stilts this is again one of the this uh, traditional forms small houses but all of the houses that you can see mostly they have these uh, uh, this shape in the roofs okay here 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 simplistic forms these are circular houses with straw roofs in uganda okay northern uganda has this the houses tend to be circular with a straw roof with the walls often made of made from mud okay now see the roof structure here okay. see the roof structure here and here okay what is the difference any difference that you can see first one is a uh, woven reed yes first one is woven reed and uganda it's a uh, straw yes uh, uganda is straw roof correct also these are a little more spread out it's not very small compared to the other ones okay. um, uh, for uh, honai what is it honai but what type as roofs Roof. it can be i think uh, it can be used as used from made from the local plants there okay hmm. thatch roof is a type of uh, making the roof okay some form of building uh, sometimes they use reed straw okay uh, palm uh, branches of uh, plants soft okay uh, various materials depending on where you, where it is being built also uh, what they do is uh, usually for thatching uh, for thatched roofs they make the top layer of the houses from uh, plants so that the water that is there is not retained and can be sli can slide off if you use mud it absorbs okay this is one of the most oldest form of making roofs as you can see okay. 
Okay, Rwanda. Do you guys know where Rwanda is? It's in East Africa. Okay, it's very. It's becoming famous recently because of its rich culture and uh, I think many wild animals are there in East Africa. Rwanda is especially very famous for that. Okay, so. Rwanda is a country of beautiful green mountains and valleys. Houses are often made of mud, grass, and banana leaves with clay tiles and thatch used for roof. Okay, so this is there is a little variety here. Clay tiles are also used. Okay, banana leaves uh, native there. Okay, grass and mud that is so usual. Okay. Looks like this. Banana leaves. Yeah, uh, this is the king's house. Okay, the king actually used to live here till I think nineteen thirty one. It is surprisingly spacious. Actually, I'll just show you some other pictures. You won't believe how it looks. This is the interior of it. It looks spacious, doesn't it? Okay. Ethiopian houses, traditional. Okay. They look like this. Sometimes they make wall art also. Ethiopian traditional houses are are round and made of wooden strips covered with a sticky combination of wet soil, clay, sand, animal dung, and straw. If you can see here carefully, okay, you will see that they are strips. Okay, they are wooden strips which are joined together by a sticky combination of wet soil, clay, sand, animal dung, and straw. Okay, again, this is a thatched roof. Kenya. Okay, so the traditional houses are built by Maasai people. Okay, I'm, I may be pronouncing it wrong again. They're semi-nomadic. Okay, so they travel from place to place and are well known for their traditional clothing. See, they are uh, the houses are made of uh, uh, mud, cow dung, and sticks. Okay, as you can see. The homes are grouped together in a compound to help protect them from wild animals. Very tribal kind of thing. Okay. Kenya is famous for its huge game reserves, where you can spot some of Africa's most amazing animals. When they say game, that they mean animals. Okay. Hunting. The landscape is magnificent with mountains, savannas, and the Great Rift Valley. Four thousand mile valley filled with diverse landscapes. See Thailand. Okay, many Thai houses are made of wood and bamboo with posts raising them off the ground. Here also, where else did we see that the the uh, the houses were raised from the ground away from the ground? Indonesia. Indonesia, correct. There is also, but they uh, may be a little different. This is the type of house. Okay, it's not the height difference is not that much. You see the Indonesian houses, okay, but they use uh, wood and bamboo with posts raising them out the ground. Okay, they I think they use bamboo. Looks like that or wood. This is surprisingly good. 
okay. homes on stilts in Bangladesh. Okay. More than 700 rivers flow across Bangladesh and traveling by boat is an everyday experience. Okay. So Bangladesh is a low-lying country that often gets flooded. So houses built near the water are made, or, made out of bamboo and again pulled up, put on stilts. These are again traditional homes. Now, because of construction you know, revolution in all the South Asian countries, houses are of different materials. We are going to only see the traditional. Okay. They are made of bamboo. You can see the design here. Palm front houses from Sri Lanka. Okay. Now, uh, you, if you go to Sri Lanka uh, for vacation or something, okay, the houses nowadays are modern, but uh, in resorts and all, no, they still have palm frond houses. But again, not like this, obviously. They are a bit more uh, sophisticated and I think not handmade. Okay. Looks uh, similar to South Indian houses. South, yes, yes, it does. But, but though again, culture in Sri Lanka and South India is, is very similar, don't you think? Yeah, so the palm uh, leaves are taken, okay? They are made into a design like this, as you can see here, and a house is on it. This is an extremely uh, basic level of housing, okay, that I've shown. In rural areas, people weave their homes out of palm fronds and sticks, okay? To join them, sticks are made to keep them stable. Palm fronds, also used. Ecuador. Okay. Ecuador is the smallest country in South America and is named after the equator which passes through it. Natural materials like palm, mangrove, bamboo, eucalyptus, and earth are often earth means man, are often used to build houses in rural area, areas such as this one. Okay. They have used made it on stilts because it's a an agricultural area. Okay. This is the most different of all the houses, the traditional houses that you see, because eucalyptus, palm is the okay, we've seen, bamboo also we've seen, not together, mangrove is there, eucalyptus is also there. Okay. Ghana, has anybody heard of Ghana? Yeah. It's in West Africa. Okay. It's a, where have you heard of Ghana? Ghana is a, very poor country, one of the poorest countries in the world, actually. Okay, very low average income there, GDP is very low. Okay, anyway, the houses there they especially make colorful houses, vibrant colors are used. Okay, if you see any vibrant colors in your question, the chances are it is from Ghana. Traditional Mexican houses. Mexico has mountains, rainforests, deserts, and beaches. Why they're giving you these is because you have uh, the condition for housing depends on the environment. Right? Mountains, it has to be sturdy. Rainforest, also sturdy to withstand rain. Here, withstand uh, high amount of wind. Desert, beaches, you know. Okay. So they are saying it is very diverse. Okay. So traditional Mexican, Mexican houses are built with adobe which is a muddy mixture of clay, soil, straw, and water. Okay. The mixture is it made into bricks, which are then used to build houses. It looks like a normal house, but the bricks that are used is made from adobe, which is a muddy mixture of clay, soil, straw, and water. Okay. Also in some of the houses, that is different. Tiny colorful homes in Haiti. 
in port of prince it uh, tiny colorful homes are built very close to one another on the hills surrounding the city okay because it's a small place where is it hmm? port of prince they are saying Caribbean, it's a country in Caribbean, in the Caribbean. Okay. Hispaniola, it shares the island with Hispaniola, the Dominican Republic. Okay, uh, Haiti is known for natu its natural disasters. Houses need to withstand earthquakes and regular hurricanes, but many people cannot afford this, okay? So uh, these houses, many houses are, still camps after the earthquake of 2010 and others have built basic concrete wall houses with tin roofs. Okay. It's a very small place, so houses need to be this close, if you see, very close. Again, they are colorful. Colombia is sometimes called the gateway of to South India, South America, sorry, because it sits where South America joins with Central and North America. Its landscape has huge variety from beautiful beaches to snow capped mountains, okay, deserts and sweeping grasslands. Houses are often brightly painted and made from cinder blocks, clay, cow manure, or hay. Okay. What does cinder block mean? Wooden blocks. Mm. Actually, it's a no, no. It's a lightweight uh, block. Okay, uh, brick. Okay. It's made of sand, cement, and uh, mixed with ash. It's a very lightweight. I think that's why they use it. Okay. Colombia, they use cinder blocks, clay, cow manure, uh, or hay. What does hay mean? What does dry, dry grass. Yes, dried yeah. grass. Tribal houses in Bolivia. Okay, these are like this, not much to see. Okay. See. Houses to withstand volcanoes and earthquakes in El Salvador. El Salvador is a country in, uh, I think, Central America, okay? Yeah. It's the smallest country in Central America, see? Because it often has volcanic eruptions as well as earthquakes, it's sometimes known as the land of volcanoes, okay? Rural houses are made of sand, clay, water, and straw with large front porch, okay? Now, uh, all the traditional houses were uh, actually made of, you know, all over the world, I'm saying. Basically, they were made of sand, clay, and water, along with the other stabilizing material. Right? So, if you guys know, I don't know where I read it, but if there was a fire in that such a place, okay, the escaping time until it all burned was a lot higher than what it is now, okay? So, where there is volcano, uh, volcanic eruptions and earthquakes, the house needs to be stable for one thing. Second thing, you cannot have too many things. Third thing, it has to withstand heat. So sand, clay, water, and straw. You cannot have any this one. Straw though is necessary sometimes. Okay, not the main ingredient. Okay, uh, This is Peru. Nearly half of Peru is covered by the Amazon for a rainforest, the largest rainforest in the world. Many people move to Lima, the capital city, to look for work every year. 
because they cannot afford to live inside the city many residents live in the hills surrounding the city in homes made out of any materials they can find in the highlands of peru where temperatures can dip below freezing families build their wood homes as tightly as possible to keep out the cold winds this to you guys know to keep the house warm wooden houses are the best okay where you see uh, if you see wherever there are you know sorry yes some things so say something Yeah, uh, wherever there is high, uh, you know, snowfall or very low temperatures, wooden houses are the most common things you can see because wood is best to withhold temperature. Okay, it is. Um, okay, Guatemala. Here, uh, Guatemala. Do you guys know what about the place? No. Okay. This is also a place in Central America. Okay. It is also a very poor country. Not the poorest, but out there. Okay. There is a very high case of malnutrition in this country. Okay, see, urban neighborhoods can be cramped with houses piled on top of each other, as you can see. Okay, Brazil. Brazil has the biggest population in South America. It is oil often well known for the Amazon rainforest. Yeah. Over a third of the population live in slums. Oh, one third. Called favelas with no secure shelter, safe drinking water supply, or toilets. They are extremely poor neighborhoods, and people living there are often vulnerable to land disputes, danger to gangs, and natural disasters. More than one third of people in Brazil live like this. Have you guys seen any like movie scenes where Brazil is shown? Fast and furious. Fast and furious. Yes. Yeah. They don't show these things. Okay. Philippines. It has over seven thousand islands. Okay. How many did Indonesia has? Have. Eighteen thousand. Yes, eighteen thousand. Yeah. Okay. People there live on only eleven of those islands. Uh, that means other, what six thousand. Nine hundred eighty-nine are non-habitable. Okay. See, a popular ship, a popular poor a tourist destination. Poverty levels are still high. Okay, with many people living in urban slums. Community. Okay, Togo is a narrow country in Africa's west coast, which became independent of France. Okay, it has beautiful beaches, exotic market and cities. Cities. Houses in countryside are often made up from mud bricks and red plaster with iron sheeted roofs. Okay, Togo. Iron sheeted roofs. Okay. Tanzania is the largest country in East Africa and is known for having plenty of amazing wildlife. Okay. Mount Kilimanjaro, the highest mountain in Africa, is there. Traditional houses are made of grass or mud, strengthened by large wooden poles. Okay. They are built built from the roof downwards rather than the bottom up. Uh, bottom up as most houses are. Okay. I'll put. I mean, I'll give this to Gorav sir. Okay, he will put this in the app. You there, you can get this. Okay. We'll do more about these. These are mostly say, American, African houses. Okay, now, just a second.
I want you guys to uh, research right now, not a homework. Okay. Try to find uh, traditional homes of India. Okay, as many as you can. I'll give you twenty minutes. Fifteen minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Once repeat the question again. Yeah. Uh, I want you guys to find traditional houses and what are the materials built built for that in India. Okay, I'll give you guys fifteen minutes to do that. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, students who are viewing, uh, view uh, like you are seeing on YouTube, uh, please research on that and uh, uh, please contact on this number and you can submit your research. The contact number is double nine seven two zero four six nine double one. You can submit your research there, and uh, sir will guide you there from. Okay, so those who are uh, viewing like on uh, YouTube, please do that, and then we will uh, complete the class tomorrow. Okay, and the students who are in Zoom like in Zoom meeting link, do your research. Be in the class only, and after fifteen minutes, ma'am will ask you the. Questions. Yes. Thank you, sir. 